I'm brand new to your live stream. Can I? You can ask anything you like. Can I ask what? What do we need to eat more meat rather than plants, please? Because plants are contraindicated. They're not required for your body. They're poor nutrition, let alone they cause a few a number of issues. I've got a video out next week, which is basically going to really clear up all this mess about, you know, the role of fiber and how it's really bad for your digestive system, really bad, and how taurine which is a critical component of animal foods, is really, really good in fixing up your whole digestive system. So that'll actually come out next week. So I don't want to give it away. So I want people to go and watch it. So that will actually explain all that sort of stuff. But if you take a look at species-appropriate diets, we only we only have to look at, we can look at tribal populations like the Inuit or the Maasai who are on pretty much a nearly 90, 90 plus percent, if not 100 in some cases, of animal-based diet. They're very healthy, multiple generations, and they've got centenarians amongst them as well. So that's what you have to really look. Do these people have centenarians? Yes, they do. There are centenarians um, Maasai, and there are centenarian Maasai um, um, Inuit as well in the past. And they had not even a word for cancer or for basically for you know for cardiovascular disease and all that and so those populations were high meat eaters over multiple generations healthy as not an issue and in very severe and harsh environments being on the snow very severe and harsh environment to operate and live in um, being in a, an arid area which is semi-desert like the maasai very difficult to survive in as well so these people are hardy strong people but they have a strong diet and, uh, you know, and while the Inuit, um, you know, don't get as much sun to get um, vitamin D, they get most of their vitamin D. They still have very high vitamin D status. Where do they get this? Um, seal fat. They, they use seal fat to cook all their food and seal fat is extremely high in vitamin D. So seals, that's why they club seals to death and actually, um, uh, you know, use their their fat because it's extremely high. And so is whale fat. That's also high in vitamin D and that's their main sources. So now, obviously, in the last eight odd thousand years, humans have sort of shifted for a whole lot of number of reasons. It's really the food supply in, the, in nature actually de diminished. It's the fattest sort of animals and all that. And as a consequence, humans had to move and start to seasonally use, you know, tubers and stuff like that as we got into the interglacial period where it became warmer. And so there were less fatty animals, the, the, you know, because when it's much colder in the, you know, prior to 12,000 years ago, the, um, and especially 20,000 years ago, um, the environment was, you know, you could get frost all the way down to the tropics. So there weren't many plants around, Ma only green ones primarily for medicinal purposes. The majority of the food came from animals. And how do we know this? We look at the long bone collagen. So the long bones of animal, of humans, um, because basically your bones are mineralized collagen. That's what they are, mineralized collagen. When you're a little child, they bend like that. They're flexible because it's collagen. Um, so this mineralized collagen, when we do isotope analysis, we find that they are very high in nitrogen 15. So delta, delta 15 um, nitrogen is very high, and that comes from animal sources. So for our species has been animal-based for thousands and thousands of years in a super or hyper carnivore state. I think we're well adapted to that sort of um, eating. Um, let's put it that way. So, and that's what, you know, plants, um, once upon a time, we may have consumed some plants um, in species that we're related to way back. But those species basically had a big cecum which we call an appendix today. And that big cecum is where they ferment. We don't have that capacity. And so since we can't break down fibre, when it goes through our colon, because where the small intestine is and the, and the actual colon, there's where your appendix is. Well, in the past, there was a big cecum. So it would go into that. These are um, hindgut fermenters. 
like the like the gorillas would go into that it would ferment it would break down you would get the short chain fatty acids and all these other things and then it would basically move through and be expelled out of the colon while it was broken down the fibrous and all that now especially when people don't even cook their their fiber type foods which is really contraindicated these little hook type things literally tear um, and damage the colon not a good thing the more fiber you consume the worse your colon is going to be in the in the long run and we're not designed we don't have a cecum anymore it's just a little appendix and that's all um, and we think based on some information that that's where our gut microbiome sort of resides so it's like a backup um, a storage for the gut microbiome and that's the only um, purpose that it actually has at the moment nothing else so it is important in a sense so if you actually have done a lot of glyphosate or antibiotics and all that and you've got at least that you can actually use things like ruteri um, and bifido i mean bacteria infantis to basically suppress all the pathogens and then allow with good nutrition slowly for your microbiome to rebalance and some of the that all those original bu um, bugs that you got from your mother when you came out of the birth canal you can re repopulate those from the appendix in that regard if you don't have an appendix then it's a, a bit more drawn out in the types of things that you have to do to try and actually restore part of that or eating the acid loving bacteria which are on animal foods will tend to basically improve that automatically anyway so but generally speaking there is no purpose for plants they've got very poor nutrition poor bioavailable um, uh, you know protein in them and it they have don't really have any purpose as far as i can see of any value even people in the past if you go back to the 50s and 60s people if they were going to do anything they would consume a few tubers and some seasonal fruit they never ate green vegetables you know it wasn't the thing you know even even children hate them for good reason the poison they've got medicinal purposes and they were used in the past for medicinal purposes how did we go from medicine to food is beyond me but that's what our crazy world has done to a lot of things so yes pretty much bs mate pretty much bs and not good for your um long-term gut health believe me or stomach health <laughs>